What's going on everyone? This is Jay Patel and welcome back to the part 2 of the backpropagation in CNN. Now in the part 1 of the video, we saw a backpropagation for a small unit which was just the convolution operation as you can see in here. Now in this video, we will be looking at the backpropagation for the entire CNN architecture. In part 1 of the video, what we did is that we take an X input X and convolved it with the filter K and added a bias B to get this output Z. Now, and we also did the back propagation for this unit and we obtained del L by del K, del L by del B using the del L by del Z that we had. And if you haven't watched the part one of the video, then I will, then I will link that video down in the description box or you can also check that out by clicking the upper I button. And if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing because I upload new machine learning videos like this every week in which I provide mathematical details behind every machine learning model. And then we also implement that in Python. And there are very few resources online which teaches you backpropagation for CNN. Most of the courses and the resources out there just implemented using TensorFlow and it does not teaches the mathematics behind the backpropagation in CNN but I have made a video on it and and that's what I do in this channel. I provide mathematical details behind models and we study them carefully and we understand it properly. So make sure to hit the red subscribe button so that you do not miss out on such great videos when I upload next time. And also it took me a lot of effort to actually make this video. So please do hit the like button, show some support so that I get motivated to make more such videos. And let's not wait further. Let's get right in with this video. Let's first see how our CNN architecture looks like. This is the first layer of our CNN. In this, we take this input image and convolve it with the filter K. Now here I'm assuming that we are only using one filter, but in a normal CNN or in, or in any other network, we actually use many such filters. But for the simple explanation of the back propagation, here I'm just taking one filter and the exact same process is done for the other filters. After convolving this input image with the filter K1, we add a bias B to obtain Z1, which is this node. Then on this Z1, we perform ReLU operation to obtain C1, which is this equation. Then we perform the average pooling operation to get the P1. Then in the second layer, we take this P1 as an input image, convolve it with the filter K2, add a bias B to obtain this Z2 and then perform the ReLU operation, then max pooling operation to obtain this P2. Then in the third layer, what we do is that we flatten this P2 image. Now this P2 might be a multi-dimensional vector. We flatten it to a single dimensional vector, which is represented by F. Then this F is given as the input to the third layer, which is the fully connected layer. Here I'm only taking one fully connected layer, FC3, which has a single node here. And that single node has sigmoid activation function, which gives us the y pred as our output. Now, once we have our y pred, which are the predictions, we can obtain the cost function for a sigmoid activation function or a binary classification. We can use this cost function and you might already be familiar with the loss. Loss is just the error for the single observation, which is this thing. Now in this video for keeping the simplicity, I will be dealing with only one input image. Thus we will be dealing with loss and not the cost. Our parameters here is W, W3, B3, K2, B2 and K1, B1. So we need to update these parameters so that they can take appropriate value to minimize the error and to get the better predictions. So to update these parameters, we need to find del L by del W3, del L by del B3 and similarly del L by del K2, del L by del B2 and then del L by del K1, del L by del B1. So our goal in this video is to obtain these gradients so as to update these weight parameters and we will obtain these by propagating backwards. And once we have these gradients, we will be just applying these weight updation equations where the W3 will be updated by W3 minus of alpha, which is learning rate times del L by del W3. And similarly, all these will be updated. Okay. So let's start by deriving these gradients. And as we are propagating backwards, we will first start with the third layer. Now the forward propagation for the third layer looks something like this. And if you have watched my playlist on the neural network 
or a n n then you might have seen my video on obtaining the back propagation for a n n now now everything from this layer to the end is same as that we had in the a n n because these fully connected layers can also be represented as the layers that we had in a n n thus this part can be just represented by an a n n and in the a n n we had obtained these equations for the back propagation if you haven't watched my video on obtaining the back propagation for the neural network then i will link that video down in the description box please do watch that video if you haven't in that video we had obtained these gradients which will be same as what we are going to have in this cnn as well thus for the back propagation equation for the cnn will come out to be exactly this here we are just dealing with one example so here dz will be y pred minus of y here this was y pred and this y is our actual labels then in that video the previous layer was represented by a2 but here the previous layer input is represented by f which is our flattened input thus here instead of a2 we will be having f here and db3 will be same as this dz3 for a single observation it will be just dz3 but for m number of observations it will be a summation of all those m observations so obtaining this del l by del w3 and del l by del b3 is very simple now it's time to move a step backward and find the gradient of this f which is del l by del f now in my ann video you might have seen that i have obtained this dz2 and this dz2 was nothing but the product of da2 and this term here a2 was the input but in our case f is the input right so df is obtained same as this da2 which was nothing but w3 transpose multiplied with dz3 and here this is the matrix multiplication so we are done with the third layer and it's time to move to our second layer now in the second layer we first need to find del l by del p2 then moving backward we need to find del l by del c2 then del l by del z2 and once we have this del l by del z2 we can obtain del l by del k2 and del l by del b2 because in the part 1 of the video you might have seen that we had this del l by del z term and an input x and these k and b so once we have this del l by del z term we know how to obtain del l by del k and del l by del b so let's first start with finding del l by del p now this can be obtained from del l by del f that we had in the previous slide now f here is just the flatten of p2 right so all the values in the p2 and the f will be the exact same the only difference will be of the dimension so del l by del p2 can be obtained by just reshaping this del l by del f into the shape of p2 so the equation for dp2 which is del l by del p2 can be given by this where we just need to reshape df into the shape of p2 once we obtain del l by del p2 we can obtain del l by del c2 but hey hey wait here there is one challenge here here we are performing the max pooling operation so how does the back propagation work for max pooling let's try to find that out to understand that let's take a hypothetical example where we have this c2 given by this 1 2 3 4 thus the p2 which is just the max pooling operation of this c2 will be just 4 because the max value of this 1 2 3 4 is 4 and let's say while moving backward hypothetically we might come up with del l by del p2 as 2 so what will be this del l by del c2 to answer this question let us examine this thing carefully if we keep this as the maximum value any change in these three values will not affect p2 and thus will not affect our final y pred and thus it will not affect the loss if these term change it is not affecting our loss which means that our del l by del c for these three terms will be zero thus our del l by del c2 will actually come out to be this way how because it is because any change here will be reflected as it is in this p thus any change in this will be reflected as it is in this it is like having y equal to x where del y by del x is 1 which means that if 
this two number changes by let's say x times this two number will also change by x times thus the final equation for del l by del c mn for any value mn will actually be written by this here in hypothetical example i had only taken c2 of 2 cross 2 matrix but let's say if the c was of 4 cross 4 dimension and the filter size f is 2 cross 2 dimension then this p will be of the dimension 2 cross 2 and thus dl by d2 will also be of the dimension 2 cross 2 this del l by del c2 will also be of 4 cross 4 dimensional matrix which will contain all these values of this del l by del p2 at a position where this c2 had the maximum value which means that there will be four such numbers in a 4 cross 4 dimensional matrix which will have a value at a certain position where this c2 had the maximum value and all the rest will be zero now i know that writing this way is becoming a mess but but i wanted to explain you so that you get better clarity so with the help of that we have also obtained our del l by del c which was here now it's time to move a step backward and obtain del l by del z now for del l by del z we already know this del l by del c and we know that c2 is the ReLU operation of z2 so this can be obtained by chain rule multiplication of del l by del c2 and del c2 by del z2 and we can obtain this del c2 by del z2 with this equation the graph of ReLU looks like this so the derivative of this graph will be given by this where this will take one value for all the positive input and zero for all the negative input which means that if our z2 let's say is given by the, these hypothetical values then our del c2 by del z2 will be a matrix which will have one at a position where z2 had a positive value and zero at a position where z2 had a negative value and its equation can be represented with the help of this and thus del l by del z2 which is dz2 can be obtained by multiplying del l by del c2 which was this term and del c by del z2 which is this Oof, so we have finally obtained del l by del z2 now we know from the part one of the video that once we have this del l by del z term and we know the input x and the filter k and b we can easily obtain del l by del k and del l by del b from the part one of the video we know that our dk2 or del l by del k2 can be obtained by performing the convolution operation between this input image and this dz2 which is this term right here so we can obtain dk with the help of this equation and similarly we can obtain db with the help of this equation obtaining this was the most challenging part and that's why i had explained it in the first part of the video so that the understanding back propagation for the entire architecture becomes quite simple and with the help of this we are also done with our second layer and now i think you might already have a proper clarity on what is going to happen in the first layer so now we will move on to our first layer which is layer one for layer one again we need to find del l by del p1 del l by del c1 del l by del z1 and once we have this del l by del z1 we know how to obtain del l by del k and del l by del p1 now the question is but we don't have del l by del p right so how will we obtain this del l by del p1 you might have known that in the part one of the video i had explained deriving del l by del x where x was the input here instead of x we have p1 as the input so this del l by del p1 is same as this del l by del x that we had in the part one of the video and if you remember the equation of that came out to be the convolution operation between the padded dz term and with the 180 degree rotated filter k obtaining this was also a very challenging part right but thanks that we had already covered that in our first video now once we have our del l by del p2 let's move backward to obtain del l by del c1 now here we have average pooling operation we already saw how the how it would look like for the max pooling operation let's see the similar for the average pooling operation let's say hypothetically we have the same c1 which is given by 1 2 3 4 value thus the p1 will be obtained by the average of these four values which will be 2.5 
Let's say hypothetically again we have del L by del P1 as 2. Now our challenge is to obtain del L by del C1. So what will that be? Now see here that any change in these value will affect and thus it will affect y pred and thus it will affect loss. And any change in these values will be actually equally distributed among all these values. What do I mean by that is that if, if we have a filter size of 2 cross 2, any change in this value will be affected by 1 4 times here because the contribution of these numbers is 1 4 times to this number. Thus any change here will also affect 1 4 times to this del L by del C. Thus the del L by del C will came out to be this matrix which is nothing but 1 by 4 times of 2. So whenever we have an average pooling operation, the del L by del C will be obtained by taking the 1 4th of the value at del L by del P. Now again here I took a simple example of 2 cross 2 dimensional C but if this was a 4 cross 4 dimensional then this would have been 2 cross 2 dimensional and this would have been 2 cross 2 dimensional and this would have again be a 4 cross 4 dimensional which will have 4 such 2 cross 2 dimensional matrices and the value of these would have been 1 4 times of the value at this matrix. Now I know I explained it roughly but I think you understand that right. These 4 values will be 1, 5, 1 4 times of this 2 and these 4 values would be the 1 4th times of the number at this position. And similarly for this and this and this and this. Thus we have obtained del L by del Z2. Whatever I explained here can in short be written in the, with the help of this equation. Now we have our del L by del C. Let's move one more step backward and obtain del L by del Z. Now you know the deal that del L by del Z can be del L by del Z1 can be obtained by chain rule multiplication of del L by del C1 with del C1 by del Z1. And previously we had already obtained del C by del Z which was this. Thus it is thus this term will be multiplied with del L by del C which we already obtained here to obtain del L by del Z which will be written with the help of this equation. And again you know the deal that once we have this del L by del Z we can obtain del L by del K with the help of the convolution operation between the input image this INP with the DZ1 and this DB can be obtained by summing the DZ matrix. So now the entire summary of this video can be summed up with the help of these many complicated equations. But still let's try to summarize that. These equations are obtained same as that we saw in ANN. If we had multiple fully connected layers, the equations would have been similarly again obtained as we had that in ANN. Once we have all the fully connected layers, we move to these, these convolutional and max pooling layers. And here we saw how the gradients can be obtained when there was a max pooling layer. And we, in the part one of the video, we already obtained this del by del k. Then we saw, then we also saw how our gradient will look like when we have our average pooling layer and so on. And once we have all these dk's and db's, we just can update the weights by using a for loop and iterating it, iterating these equations for many number of times unless this parameter takes appropriate values. Now if we had multiple filters here, these equations would have been the exact same just that the dimension of this dk would have increased. Okay, so after a lot of complex mathematics, we finally saw how the backpropagation for convolutional neural network looks like. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please do hit the like button. If you have any suggestions, then let me know that down in the comments below. Show your support in the comment section and also by liking this video. And in the next video, we will start with our TensorFlow series. So I hope to see you there. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.